Hello, true believers. This is Doc Hogg, and welcome to episode 27 of Comics and Variety. I'm going to be looking at issues 3 and 4 of Marvel Comics War of the Realms today, but first, if you like this channel, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell to be uh, updated on new videos, and of course, hit the like button. And as always, you can contact me via my email at dhog70 at gmail.com and at my Twitter handle, at Doc underscore Hog. I'm really enjoying the War of the Realms. The plot is moving along, the characters are fun, uh, they've cut way down on Spider-Man's yapping that, that was so evident in uh, the first issue, and his comments now are even kind of amusing. Um, one of the criticisms I'll be talking about in a bit is uh, something that the author, Jason Aaron, didn't include in this uh, comic. Uh, but that is basically another way of saying, I, I wish there was more. And when that's your criticism, um, you know you've got a pretty good comic. Now, if you can describe the plot of a comic or a book or a movie in 25 words or less, chances are you're off to a good start. Issues 3 and 4 of War of the Realms boils down to this, quote, Good guys are going to defend Earth by bringing in reinforcements, while cutting off the bad guy from his reinforcements. That's only about 20 words. Pretty cool. Writers of other comics, take note. Now, um, issue three begins with Freya, Queen of Asgard and Thor's mom, taking charge, sending a group led by Captain America to find Thor, who is still fighting frost giants in Jotunheim. Uh, and here comes the rescue team riding in on winged horses, and Spider-Man has a pretty funny comment. Hey, why does everybody else have cool swords and stuff, and I've just got a shield? What kind of loser goes into battle with just a... Uh, oh, wait. Next, Freya sends a group, including yourself, to destroy what is called the Black Bifrost, uh, that Bifrost b belongs to Malekith, the King of the Dark Elves, and it, it's what has allowed him to travel the Nine Realms, you know, uh, waging war on them. Freya is able to send out all these groups using the Bifrost and Asgard, uh, and of course that needs to be guarded too, which is, uh, she sends a group led by Daredevil to, to do this. But the, uh, the Dark Elves successfully destroy the Bifrost in Asgard, which means that the heroes now have to fight a bunch of Dark Elves so that they can hang on to the Black Bifrost, because that's now going to be needed to, you know, send all these groups around. And we end issue three where the rescue squad has found Thor. He's beaten the Frost Giants, but he's in pretty bad shape, missing an arm, and his hammer, Molnir, uh, Molnir? I think that's how it's pronounced. Molnir is broken. So, on to issue four. Uh, the heroes are defending the Black Bifrost and using it to track down the remnants from the other realms that have been defeated by Malekith. And they're going to bring these folks back to Midgard, a.k.a. Earth, so that they can join the heroes in fighting Malekith on Earth. The rescue squad brings Thor back to Earth, and he's in bad shape. Uh, so is his father Odin, uh, the king of Asgard. Uh, he's in bad shape from issue one, but Odin stirs and he finds out that Tony Stark has designed a suit of armor for him. And this will prove handy as he will join his wife at the Black Bifrost. Uh, the heroes hold the Black Bifrost and collect the remnants from the Nine Realms. And now Freya wants to destroy the Black Bifrost so she can strand Malekith on Earth and cut him off from reinforcements. But Malekith comes through the Bifrost, attacks her and stops her. And that's when Odin comes to her rescue and they destroy the Bifrost. They may have also destroyed themselves. Um, it's not clear yet, but uh, at the very least they are strandled in uh, Svartalheim, uh, the land of the Dark Elves. And apparently Malekith is now stranded there as well. So it looks like the battle for Midgard will take place without Malekith uh, leading his, uh, his forces on Earth. Uh, issue 4 ends with Thor having recovered, and he's ready to lead the battle for Midgard. Now, a couple of folks on one of the Facebook pages I participate in uh, criticized this page in issue 3 for having rather dumb dialogue, and, and I can see that. And there are a few little parts like that in this comic, but fortunately not too many of them. Um, my main criticism is that issue 2 had this teaser in it, 
which, which suggested that in issue three, the heroes would have to rescue Thor. That turns out not to be the case. Uh, the heroes do fight their way through Jotunheim, only to find that Thor has defeated most of the frost giants. So not only is that part a bit anticlimactic, but we were teased with no follow-through. And that's one thing we comic book nerds really hate, because we have a lot of experience with being teased and getting no follow-through. Uh, I think Jason Aaron and company could have spent an entire issue on just a rescue mission, but like I said earlier, that's a criticism that amounts to really wanting more. And finally, I should say that the artwork is outstanding. I don't think comic book uh, art gets much better than this. So big kudos to artist Russell Dowderman, Matthew Wilson, who does the coloring, and Joe Sabino, who does the lettering. And I'm really, really looking forward to issue five. Okay, that music means that it is time for Hogs Headlines. All the news that Doc Hawk... Uh-oh! Dateline, SJWs prove that Ethan Van Skyver is a fascist. Comic book veteran and creator of the comic Cyberfrog has been found out by Aaron Alvarez. As he showed in this tweet, Van Skyver's tattoo is really a swastika in disguise, and that must mean that Van Skyver is secretly a Nazi. After seeing this, I realize that there are Nazis in disguise everywhere. For example, this flooring company. And this investment firm. I'll bet Ethan Van Skyver puts his money there. And then, then I found the biggest hidden Nazi of all. I'll bet Van Skyver shops there. Well, I was very grateful. If not for Twitter, I wouldn't have known any of this. Unfortunately, I guess it must have been overwhelming for Aaron Alvarez after I made him aware of all these fascists in disguise. It's now seeping into the comic book industry. War of the Realms creator Jason Aaron has one of those tattoos. Th this is so disturbing. I'd, I'd tell you to have a nice day, but you, sh you really should be running down to your basement to hide. They're everywhere!